Robbie and I set out bright and early to round the Brooks Peninsula. Wow. Why did they sit at the surface like that? Yeah, they're warming themselves up before they go down. Oh, I didn't know they're here. Huh? I didn't know they were here. Yeah, I also thought I saw um, they had a back tail last time. The peninsula sticks way out into the sea, with shallow waters around it, causing breaking waves and an intimidating swell close to the shore. Solander Island was surrounded by many birds, including puffins. Uh, it hardly shows up. I'm moving away there. Okay. <laughs> Harry was going to be really happy down there. It's like an eyeball. Oh! It's like half an eyeball. It's crazy. <laughs> Fat he is. Wow. So we started on the fifth in Esperanza, anchored overnight in the Chatlets. On the 6th, we headed over to Cayucat, which was an awesome uh, boat-oriented little town. 
where you go visit your neighbor by kayak or a little speedboat. And the whole town was kind of on little dots of islands. I really enjoyed that. I'll remember that when we come back to Canada. That would be an awesome place to have a boat. And then we headed out of Cayucat, not sure where we were going to make it that day. And we had a pretty gnarly sail uh, from Cayucat into Columbia Cove? Columbia Bay? Columbia Cove. Columbia Cove. We stayed there overnight um, to shelter from some wind. And then we ended up sheltering there from some wind for another night too. Woke up nice and early. I woke up at about 3.30 because the anchor alarm went off. The boat had moved to a weird spot and it had swung around all the way in the opposite direction than what the winds were gusting for the past two days. So that, that indicated that the wind had died. To get ourselves around the Brooks Peninsula. Yeah, Brooks Peninsula. Now we're on the north side. Saw some... Have We've been seeing a lot of other sailboats heading south. Everybody's going south and we're going north. But the current was pushing us nicely along all throughout this trip, so, you know, it was okay. And now we're on our way to Winter Harbor. I wonder what we're going to find there. I'm expecting it to look like winter there. I hope it doesn't look like winter there. <laughs> It'll be interesting the fishing line goes off now as you're interviewing. Yes. Fish on! No, not on yet. Oh yes, we caught the biggest salmon of our uh, boating. I think we caught, a, we caught a bigger one. This is the biggest one I should put in the boat to land, actually land. Yeah, okay. This is the biggest salmon that we've landed inside the cockpit yet. All the other ones of this size have been, uh, Gotten away. They, they shook, shook their head and said no and went away. Well, the last one went in the prop. Oh, yeah. And you caught it using your broken, chopped up uh, flasher. Boat ends are supposed to look like this. Yesterday, the day before yesterday, hit the salmon, hit the prop. And that was him and half my flasher went off. Well, not half. The engine is handling the one and two meter. Uh, swell very well. The swell is fine. Nah, it's chop we can't handle. Yeah, we, we were sailing in the gnarly stuff the other day and we had to pull the engine out of the water or else it would be dipping under. That's why I was in the way it comes from behind. Yeah, okay, so when the wave's coming from behind, it's better to lift the, en the engine. We had to put the, one of our bung, our wooden plugs. <laughs> Just to make sure. Whoop! See Daisy. Fighting, huh? <laughs> Cancel that. That's the two two biggest salmon that we've gotten into the cockpit of the boat. There's more jumping on the boat. <laughs> I think we're good for now. So it looks bigger and healthier. So how do you get from there to here? Sesame oil, olive oil, soya sauce, garlic, pepper, and some universal spice if you have it, which is good for fish. And uh, yeah, that's it. You just let it marinate for about half an hour and then you destroy it. If you have a hot plate, it's the best. You just sear it on both sides. Oh, you just put it on the barbie and it's excellent.
Five minutes, wham bam lunch. Fucking thing! Oh, why is it so scary looking? Go. It's okay, babe. It's okay. Run back to the bottom, you piece of shit. There, okay. I got him, but I couldn't. Like, I don't know. How I'm gonna lift it. It's okay. What are we gonna do with it? I thought I got the bottom, I thought for a second. I was like, ah, shit, I got stuck in the bottom. That's it, I got my one monster halibut, never again. Robbie, what have you done? <laughs> yes. Robbie. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. What the fuck are we going to do with this? We met a nice gentleman and his wife on an Ontario 32 in Sea Otter Cove who gave us some advice. I now know the easy way of getting down in a small boat. What's that? Harbour hopping or far out? No, don't go far out, you'll regret it. We did, and I've never had worse weather. And all the harbours, except for some of the really small ones, are easy to get into. Tying up at the dock down there, we, we were on a, a race boat coming back from Hawaii on the Big Maui. Okay. 50 footer. The most we paid was $12 a night. Oh. Nice. The harbors okay. are empty. Everybody that got to San Francisco, half the crews just walk off the boat, never again. Husbands, wives, what, one or the other. Yeah. They just, it's just a nightmare that went out. Those that stayed in and harbor hopped had absolutely no problem. Okay. Well, we were we were considering harbor hopping, but then we were like, well, that can't be easier because then you're crossing all the sandbars and. So they're easy. Okay. In the summertime. They're really, they're, we, we listened on going into Eureka and, and, and they said, well, if so many meters out or yards out, it was breaking two feet. And yeah. Boats under 30 feet weren't allowed in. And, okay. And, and so we, we went through and it was flat as this. That's good to know because we, we've yeah. heard of, we were saying, oh, don't, don't you go anywhere near the coast. And some people say, oh, don't you go anywhere far. It's like one or the other. I talked to the fishermen who were tied to. Yeah. And he said, well, if I was you, I'd just go out, he says, edge of the, edge of the crab pot line. Yeah. Is five miles roughly. See what you think. We had a back eddy. 
we motored up the coast in light southeasterly. Huh. It was okay. it, it was a very pleasant trip. Uh, garlic, um, olive oil, soya sauce, and you can put a bit of um, sesame oil in it. What do we have here? Big bowl of halibut right over there, and this is your usual garlic, uh, a few le a leek, uh, some leftover uh, small peppers, and now we're gonna stir fry everything in there with some sesame oil and olive oil. <laughs> what is that? Flop. Oh, he's flapping on purpose. Oh, they're on both sides of the boat. Ravi, they're hunting us. <laughs> oh, what? they're jumping. I think I think that the orca is going after them right there because they're jumping right there. Winter Harbor was nice. There was uh, a public wharf and we tied up there very briefly and put water in the boat, talked to some people about weather, washed the cockpit. And moved on. We met somebody uh, just outside of Winter Harbor. We anchored. We met another person on a boat that we recognized from Victoria and went over and said hello. 26 foot beautiful uh, Contessa that 
we tried to buy off of them when we were in Oak Bay last year, but they didn't want to do a trade. From Winter Harbor, we went out, we went up the island uh, to kind of see how far we could get that day. We kind of got as far as uh, Geese Bay, Guys Bay, Guys, either it's like guys, like that's a, all the guys, or it's geese, I'm not sure which. Robbie caught a halibut up the corner there, and then the wind was kind of p picking up, and we didn't want to anchor in that bay up there, because that would have been horrible for the night. So we went back down to uh, Otter, Sea Otter Cove, where we saw a sea otter coming in and going out. Did the rounding of the Cape Scott and the bar at the top of the island. And then Bull Harbor was kind of interesting because there was a sign that said that they wanted to charge us fees for anchoring. Um, but I called them on the radio and they didn't seem very interested in doing that for us. So now we're continuing down towards uh, Campbell River. We had fair winds and current pushing us down the Johnston Strait and through the narrow, churning passes. We traveled through Seymour and Surge Narrows without trouble. That's awesome, man. We have the same, but we never used them yet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, don't know, I wonder how fast my way would go with the... We made a haul-out appointment in Campbell River and moored at a friend's house until the big day. Oh. 